there, welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah and I am the Style Coach and as you can see, I'm all prepared to do my own analysis today, my color analysis. Now, of course, I know what colors suit me best. That's what I do, or it's certainly part of what I do, but I wanted to take you through the process and allow you to guess if you don't know already along the way. I'm gonna go through the process just like I would with my clients and you can let me know in the comments below whether warm or cool suits me, bright or muted. If you're interested in your own online color analysis or in-person color analysis, do get in touch with me. I've got frequently asked questions in this description down below, so please do check that out. Of course, I have other services as well. I generally work with individuals, speakers, business owners to build a strong personal presence through style with the aim of being recognizable and memorable and authentic. If you're interested in this, do get in touch. Now, just like any of my clients, I would ask them to put their hair back and put a hairnet on for this part of the consultation because we are only focusing in on the skin. Okay, this gives us a blank canvas so that we can concentrate all our efforts on the skin itself. So we're going to start off with cool versus warm colors. Let's go. Terracotta, which is warm, versus fuchsia. What do you think? I, of course, have my preference, <laughs> very much so, but I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. And by the way, at the moment, I have a little bit of a tan on my face, the middle of June here in Ireland. Uh, we've had a little bit of sun, <laughs> so my skin is not as pale as it would be in the winter. Uh, I have a few extra freckles, but um, really that's the overtone of the skin or the tone of the skin, which sits on the surface of the skin. It does change throughout the seasons. It changes throughout our life. What doesn't change is the undertone. And so you've got to try and see beyond the overtone of the colors in order for you to get a good idea. So the undertone can be a little bit more difficult to see if you're not used to looking for these things. So what I see here with the terracotta, you could be forgiven for thinking that, oh, that looks okay. But to me, there's um, quite a lot of yellowness that comes through my skin here. And that's the overtone. So remember I said I have a little bit of a tan. Uh, I also have a little bit of olive tones to my skin as well. But for me, there's a bit of orange here. There's a lack of definition in my jawline. Uh, I look a little bit green around the gills, to be honest. Uh, with the fuchsia, that yellowness recedes and I've got that definition back in my jaw. So I definitely prefer the fuchsia over the orange. Let's take a look at a few more colors. Yellow green and a blue green, which is cool. The yellow green and the cool blue green. Again, I see the, a similar story here. Um, the yellow green brings out those yellow tones in my skin, which is not desirable. It's not a tan. <laughs> it's not making me look warm and glowing. Oh, I just kicked the camera. And the, the cooler colors take that yellowness out of the skin and brings back uh, a more even tone to the complexion. A cool orchid pink versus salmon. Same thing here. Are you seeing the pattern? <laughs> Let's do it the other way around. So you have the salmon and the orchid. Definitely the orchid. Mahogany versus a navy blue. Mahogany, which is warm, versus navy blue. No need to, <laughs> to say it here, I suppose. You can definitely see the pattern of cool tones suiting me better. Those yellow colors, those yellow base colors, the warmer to tones, definitely bringing out the sallowness in my skin, which is not what I want. Last one for cool versus warm. This is a tomato red, which is warm, versus a cool blue red. Definitely the blue red again. Let's just confirm this cool versus warm theory with a couple of metallics. So let's have a look at first the gold, which is best suited to those with warm undertones. Okay, and now we have the silver. Gold versus silver. 
So what I notice here is I don't think the gold is terrible, um, but I certainly notice that when I wear the gold, more yellow comes out in my skin. And then when I wear the silver, it looks like an instant facelift throughout, through my jaw um, and everything's just looks a lot more lifted and fresh. Did you see the difference there? So at this stage, we've identified that I've got cool undertones, but that's only, of course, a part of the puzzle. The next thing we need to do is look at the intensity of colors. So now that I know that I am cool undertoned, we look at either two seasons, winter and summer. Winter being stronger, more vibrant colors, summer being more delicate colors on the softer side. So let's look at all cool colors, but the intensity this time will be different. And for this one, I'm going to remove the hairnet and we look at all the features together. So for this part of the analysis, I'm not gonna tell you my preference. I'm gonna hand that over to you. And you can let me know in the comments below whether you think the high intensity colors are better or the low intensity. Of course, once I show you the entire selection, I will let you know. But in the meantime, come to your own conclusions. Let me know in the comments and you'll find out in just a few minutes. So the things that we're looking for here is that the intensity of the color matches the intensity of my features. And you might say, well, what does that mean? It should all be very harmonious. A color should never be the first thing that we see on somebody. It should be complementary to them. It should feel like it's part of them, like it just flows between their hair, their eyes, their skin, all the way into the color, and it feels very evenly matched. When a color is too bright, it can become overpowering and distracting. And if it's not strong enough, it can wash a person out or make their features feel like they're not in focus. So the eyes become less important um, and it kind of takes the color out of the hair. Of course, we don't want that. So those are some of the things to look for. The first colors we have are a deep rose, which is from the summer family. So in other words, it is the less intense of these colors versus a fuchsia which is more intense in its chroma and it's from the winter family. Once again, deep rose, fuchsia. Soft gray navy from the summer family against a navy from the winter family, more intense. Once again, the soft, and the more intense. A blue red from the more intense family of winter, a burgundy from the softer season of summer. High intensity, low intensity. Last one, so this is a pastel blue green, low intensity from the summer family versus a blue green from the winter family, high intensity. Once again, soft, versus bright. So I hope you agree with me that the more intense colors definitely work with my features better. There's much more harmony between um, the depth of my hair, my eyes, everything is much more in focus in my own features than with the weaker colors of summer. So with that in mind, that means we're part of the winter season, but of course there's three sub seasons within winter. There's cool winter, the coolest of all the winter seasons bordering summer. We've got dark winter. So those colors are beautifully deep and rich colors. We add black into colors to make them deep. And then we have bright winter, the brightest of winter crossing over into spring, temperature is less important here. So what we're going to do is have a look at these three sub seasons. And again, let me know what you think and we'll take it from there. So first up we have bright winter. So the very brightest of the winter season, the temperature less important here is really about the intensity that you can handle in your features against these colors. And there's certainly a few colors here that I think could work. And um, this green is okay, but this hot turquoise that's at the front here feels just like it's 
it's starting to wear me instead of me wearing the color. So let's compare it to the other palettes and you can let me know your thoughts. Okay, dark winter. How do we feel about this? Can we eliminate one of the other ones? Can we say yes for sure to one of these? Or do we need to see the third subseason of winter to make a final decision? And finally, we have cool winter. So the coolest of the winter season, bordering into summer. I don't know about you, but I certainly have a preference there. But of course, what we need to do is check in on the sister seasons of each of these palettes to cross reference and to make sure that the one we're leaning into works well as the sister season palette or that the other two definitely don't work as their sister seasons. So in other words, we need to try dark autumn, which is the sister season of dark winter. We need to try bright spring, which is the sister season of bright winter. And we need to try cool summer, which is the sister season of cool winter. Let's do that. Okay, we've got bright spring here. So very bright in its intensity again, the high intensity but also we're leaning into a warmer side this time. And for me, while it's a fun palette, I don't think it's something that I would borrow from too easily. There's the yellow tones start to become just, uh, it's picking up too much of my yellowness in my skin overtone and not complementing my undertone. For me, I would say no to this one. Then we have Dark Autumn, Sister Season of Dark Winter. And um, I think I'd struggle to wear some of these and look well in them. The brown especially, the orange would not be great on me at all. And the tomato red we saw earlier, which wasn't great. Again, those yellow tones just coming out in my skin so much with the, the warmer colors. And they're not even that much warmer. It's just that they're kind of neutral to warm and even still they bring out that yellowness in my skin. Last one to try is Cool Summer. Okay, selection from Cool Summer. How do you think about this one? I certainly like this as an option compared to the Dark Autumn and the Bright Spring. Definitely this is my favorite and I was leaning into Cool Winter as my preference while we were just talking about the sub-seasons of winter. Let's just see these colors individually on me. So this is Raspberry from the Summer Family. I would wear that quite easily and be very happy in this as well. That's the thing as well, you've got to be happy in your colors too. Yes, I would definitely see myself wearing this. My hair color looks rich, my skin looks good, that yellowness has receded. Yeah, I'd be quite happy borrowing from this season. Plum, love this. Yeah, I would be very happy wearing this, I think. That is just complementing all of my features very well. And a light blue red, definitely better for than that tomato red that we saw earlier. Yeah, I'd be very happy wearing this as well. Let's just take a look at those cool winter colors individually as well. So we had that gorgeous fuchsia color. I love this, this is one of my favorite colors and you'll notice it's in my branding as well for my business. That's no mistake, of course. I build my, my brand around my color palette. I use my color palette for absolutely everything. So um, this is a color that I really love. We've got royal blue. This is another color that I wear and I didn't wear blues for a long time, just out of preference, I suppose. But then I start wearing them and uh, this color and people were complimenting all the time when I wore this. So I'm, I love this as well. Emerald green, yeah. Absolutely, I like that. Here's a blue red, love that, love that, really nice. And then we've got navy, yep, yeah, absolutely, I wear that very happily. So I am confident in my approach, of course I knew this before we started this, but it was to take you through the process and the interaction as well. Let's do a little bit of a recap. So the first thing we did was look at warm colors, versus cool colors. Do you see the difference? I'll do it again. There's those warm colors and cool colors. Oh, I look so orange with this, <laughs> with these warm colors next to me. That does not look healthy. That's much better, definitely much better. 
After that, we looked at the intensity of colors. So we had low intensity versus high intensity. Low intensity versus high intensity. And the high intensity definitely better for me against the, the soft, oh yes, for sure. So that means that I cannot be an autumn because these colors are just too much on the warm side and also they're quite muted. They're not as bright as the winter season. So this is a palette I would stay away from. I'm also not a spring, again, warm, this time bright. So there's probably a couple of colors I could borrow from there, like the navy, uh, maybe this turquoise could be okay. But as soon as we get into any kind of those warm colors, um, I need to stay away from those. Now we're getting closer with the cool colors and this palette is the summer palette. So a little bit less intense than the winter palette. I can definitely borrow some colors from here, but for my everyday wardrobe, I'm not gonna base my palette on this. Then we finally ended up at winter and cool winter specifically. So once I knew my best colors, I started applying the knowledge immediately through my makeup, through what I had in my wardrobe, putting great colors scarves next to my face if I had the wrong color near myself. But um, it was only really over time that my wardrobe now looks like my color palette. And that's the thing about color uh, and knowing your colors. Yes, there's just things you can do immediately to start looking better and feeling better in your colors, but know that this is a lifetime project as well. This is something that it's a journey and not a simple destination where you say, aha, here I am, I don't have to work for this anymore. No, every time you buy something, every time you get your nail color done, every time you buy something from makeup, you're gonna be following your color palette. My, my car is even from my color palette. <laughs> you can do your interior decorating from your color palette but you get the idea. This is something I wish I knew when I first start buying clothes because I made mistakes along the way and I made mis expensive mistakes as well. And I never really knew why things worked or didn't work uh, until I learned about color and, and I knew my, my color group. So now um, I spend money and I spend it with much more confidence because I know that I'm gonna have these items for a long time, I know they work for me, so I'm willing to invest in my clothing now because I am sure about them. I know they're not mistakes. That's it for today's video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in this or any of my other consultation services like body shape consultation, wardrobe editing, shop your wardrobe consultation, please do get in touch. Thanks for watching, bye.